So next up in our three-dimensional coordinate system, we're going to introduce the distance and midpoint formulas. So suppose that we have a point in three dimensions, we'll call it x1, y1, z1, and we have another point in three dimensions that we are going to sort of sketch out a box to represent the distance from one to the other. So sketching out a box similar to what we saw in the uh, plotting a point in three dimensions example. Making sure that all of our sides are mutually parallel to each other, or excuse me, parallel or perpendicular to each other. So those will connect out here at x2, y2, z2. Now the idea behind the distance formula is that when you're working in two dimensions, if you have two sides that are perpendicular to each other, then the distance that connects them diagonally is going to be like the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Now given that it's the hypotenuse of a right triangle, what you can do with this, if we were to set this up as this being an x-axis, this being a y-axis, and this being a z-axis, so x, y, z, not necessarily having to be in that order, but uh, we would have a change in x, that'd be x2 minus x1. We'd have a change in y, that's y2 minus y1, and we'd have a change in z, that's z2 minus z1. So to create this distance across the base of the box, as it were, we could use the Pythagorean theorem for that. We'll call that distance d for a sec. We'll say that d squared <clears throat> is equal to, uh, that would be x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. However, the distance that we're actually looking for would be this guy right here that connects the initial point to the terminal point. You'll notice that though uh, d along with this change in z would technically create a right triangle as well. Therefore, for the big distance, we'll call the big distance d, we could say that capital D squared is equal to little d squared, that leg, plus this leg squared. So that would be z2 minus z1 squared. Then if we make this substitution on the d2 and take a square root to solve for d, we can get the following. That distance is going to be equal to the square root of large radical x2 minus x1, quantity squared, plus y2 minus y1, quantity squared, plus z2 minus z1, quantity squared. Because we're dealing with a distance, we're going to define this as the positive square root. We don't need to worry about a plus or minus here. You'll also notice that if we were to cut it off right here and cover all this up, we would have exactly the distance formula in two dimensions. So it extends really nicely into higher dimensions by simply taking whatever the next variable is, find the change in that variable, square it, and keep it under the radical. So hypothetically, if we were to go up to, say, four dimensions or five dimensions or six dimensions, you could potentially foresee how that takes place. Now, that's our distance formula. For the midpoint formula, midpoint formula works very similarly in the sense that <clears throat> We're simply going to do to z what we would do to x and y in two dimensions. So with that in mind, the way that we find a midpoint is we add the two numbers up and divide by two. A midpoint is like saying take the average of these two points. Now one place that this is going to come in handy is when we start talking about spheres in three dimensions. If we're given the diameter of a sphere, we should be able to figure out the center and radius based off of that using the distance and midpoint formulas. We'll see that in a couple videos from now.